And you know what's so interesting about this deal? That yeah. this owner went to find another agent to sell first and they got an offer at 2.2 million mm. when the valuation is at 2.1 and they said they dream about us and they met us. They say, we rejected the offer because we felt that J and Estate could do a better job and they challenged us to sell at a higher price. Welcome to another episode of the Locked It series where our brokers come together to share with you how we managed to sell listings that are super hard to sell, stuck in the market for years, and also how we hit record transaction, okay? And you know what? If you're just wondering how you can contact us even before skipping this video, <laughs> there's going to be a QR code that's going to appear somewhere here so you can just scan if you're bored of this video and you just trust the January Estate team, right? And we are speaking to two main target audiences. One, if you are a seller who is so dejected, demoralized, so sad, about selling a home because it's just so demoralized. There's so many things and there's no offers. We hope to provide some pro tips for you. Or if you are a realtor who are, you know, just so stuck with your listing, we hope that this can provide some pro tips to you as well. But most importantly, this video is not to shout out to only owners who have their home stuck. But if you are looking to list your unit fresh with us, please do it as well, okay? So today, we have none other than the Director of Operations and the Team Lead of Southside, Geraldine. Satrio. Hello. Yes, and today we'll be talking about this particular unit that we help our owners invested three years ago. I think they cash out more than $400,000 in profit. And you know what's so interesting about this deal? That yeah. this owner went to find another agent to sell first and they got an offer at $2.2 mm. when the valuation is at $2.1 and they said they dream about us and they met us. They say, we rejected the offer because we felt that J and Real Estate could do a better job and they challenged us to sell at a higher price, which we did. <laughs> yes. It's quite stressful. So, disclaimer. So we don't just sell hard properties yes. to, that's hard to move. Yes. We sell... Easy properties yes, at top price also. We also sell easy properties. <laughs> Because I think I think we always give people the idea that we only sell hard listings. Yeah, which we get so a lot. So the Thank listings so that's coming to us are really, really Super hard tough to listings. So we need to also shout out to people who are looking to sell. That's right. And you know yes. why is it so important to find a good team to sell at the start? Because the first two weeks of a listing is the most important Correct. time. If you come to us with a listing that's housing sung already, right? It's very yes. hard. Yes, we can hit a good price for you, but it was it will not be the potential of the home. Correct. Right. So shout out to those owners who have easier listings. You can let us sell. We will still put in our hardest to sell at the top price. Yes. I think this scammer is very clear already. Yes. Because we are getting, but honestly, we're very thankful. Lah. We're getting a lot of like, penthouses, Sentosa, Orchard, which is, we should be love it. But of course, we also want some easy listings that we can challenge ourselves to hit at top price. Lah. Yes. Right? Because owners have been coming to me saying that, hey, you know, I see that you guys are, uh, you, guys are you guys are strong in selling hard listings. <laughs> but not the easy ones. So I have a hard listing that I need you to sell. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've been getting a lot of challenging listings. So, we need to put a very, very clear disclaimer here. Yes, that's the reason why our corporate attire is a jacket and not a suit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We're all budget conscious. Okay, let's jump into this particular listing. This listing is at Affinity at Serangoon. Yes. Right? And of course, I believe there are a lot of challenges. And I believe that in a development that just TOP, the competition is insane, yep. right? With, but you know, fun fact, we have sold a lot of units in the TOP development as well in recent months. But maybe share with us a little bit more about the details of this unit some of the challenges that we felt that we had, um, and also maybe how do you sell this whole home at the top price, highest price ever, and even had the confidence, we even had the confidence that the owner, yes, trust it to us. Yeah, let's talk about the unit first. Yeah, I think I think when the owner actually first approached us and they said, hey, uh, we have this listing that we want to sell. Yeah. But then at that time, uh, they already had an agent. Yes. And when they told us that, when we met with them in person, they said that they actually already had an offer at uh, 2.2. And we told them to please accept it. <laughs> yes. We told, because even before meeting them, we were thinking, hey, actually 2.2, around 2.2 to 2.22 is price. actually a good price. Yeah. Yeah, because the last transactions were all around like the 2.1 million range. Yes. Um, This is a slightly different three-bedroom because it has a double volume ceiling. Yes. It's on the highest floor. Yes. So 2.22 higher than the past transactions, it's actually it's good. a good price. Yeah, yeah. good price. So, so we told the to owner. So the agent yeah. who lost this deal is not our fault. We really told the owners yeah. to accept it, but they said they want to trust our service and try us out, yeah. which we were quite stressed. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was stressful because the owners already had an expectation in mind. That's right. That they're not going to take anywhere below 2.2. .2. Yes. And they told us that they want a 2.3. Yes. Yeah, so we said that, okay, because we also saw how the previous agent was marketing the home. Yeah, which wasn't the best. Which wasn't the best. Yeah. Um, we saw that the photos taken were photos of the floor, uh, they were not taking, they were not representing the unit in the best like possible. Like. Yes. Yeah. But with the interaction with us, the owners made $50,000 more. Yeah. Because they sold it at 2.25 million. Yes. I think that was less than a month, right? Did we sell it? 
It was within one and a half months. Oh, one and a half months. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. So how did I meet this owner? This owner was actually a CEO of a big company in Singapore. And I met him and uh, of course the wife, we had, a, we had a great meal with them yesterday to thank them uh, back in 2019. Mm. Right, and I met him through one of my friends in uh, last time in uh, secondary school, JC, as well as in an SMU. Right, yeah. And these owners were amazing because they really supported me at the start of my business, twenty nineteen, and yes. they were just laughing yesterday that five years I've done five transactions with Jervis, yes. right? And we made them a lot of money through real estate investments that they are now playing golf every single month. We're not going to say the identity. But yeah. Mr. and Mrs. If you're watching this, thank you so much for your support. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And and I remember the first time when they met me was to sell this listing at some of your park. And it was stuck in the market for one and a half years. And uh, I did not know that the previous agent was actually my colleague uh, mm. that was in another team in PropNex. I took it on and not knowing that. But we, in the end, we sold it at top price within two months. Mm. And in the end, I sold the HDB. We restructured their unit at Penha- a penthouse at High Park Residences. And we reinvested it. And that's how they had their retirement fund, right? Yeah. So that's also the reason why when they got an offer at $2.2 million, even though it was already record price, right? And they have easily made $400,000 uh, from the investment investment that I picked for them in the past, right? They were like, you know what? They really met us and they told us at McDonald's. And yes. that was the place. He, they asked us, do you remember this place? I said, yes. This is the place where we decided to invest in the first asset. And they yes. did it. And they said, now we have made 400K, but we feel that General Real Estate can do a better job. And we thought that, okay, maybe it's true. They have no offers and they need, it's a distress call. Yes. And they say we got a check offer at 2.2 million. We're like, wow, thanks for the faith. Of course, with such faith, we will take it up, right? So I think Geraldine shared the unit. The unit is a three-bedroom unit. It was actually a premium stack, corner stack with good views, but the marketing wasn't done too right, right? There were photos of the floors. I think the unit was not staged. There were no virtual staging done, right? So when you first took out the listing, how did you feel? I mean, 2.3 was the asking, uh, offer at 2.2. Even though we encouraged the owners to take it, they say, we trust you guys more. Please sell it at a higher price. How do you feel then? Yeah, I think, I think, um, when they when you actually met them before, yeah. there were a lot, of, I mean, we've been improving our marketing efforts. Yes. Um, from when you actually first met them. Yes, 100%. And all the way until we met them again in McDonald's. Yes. So we proposed to them some marketing efforts that were put in for them like, yeah. as compared to uh, what their previous agent did. And I think what we did right was, first, we actually did um, a floor plan analysis. Yes. Not only within the development, um, we also understood what were the competitors um, asking for mm. and the facing of these competitors' listings. Yes. And we also compared to surrounding developments, yeah. not just within Affinity, yes. but also within garden residences. That's right. Which so, is a nearby competitor yes. that just TOP. So we saw that eh, price-wise, actually, a lot of them are a lot more competitive than ours. Mm. As a normal, as a buyer that would um, look at the value of the home, I wouldn't go for my listing. 100%. Yes. So I had to think of ways of how I could market this such that buyers would want to pay such a price. Yes. Yeah. So it had to go for the unique selling point of this home, which was the double volume ceiling. That's right. But the unit was vacant. Yes. There were no lights installed. No furniture. Yeah. So no furniture, nothing at all. So Empty. you would see wires hanging. So what we had to do was to actually get the 3D rendering in. That's right. And the yeah. virtual staging that we yes, have done. Yes, and the so virtual staging. I think what we'll do is that we can show you our virtual staging photo yeah. somewhere yeah. around here so that you can see what's the transformation. And when I saw the virtual staging that's done yes. by yourself and the marketing team, yeah. I was like, whoa, I'll buy this unit definitely. And this is the importance of choosing the right un- agent to represent your unit now because we really take pride in selling at the top price, right? Yep. So before the listing go live, right? Before we did, uh, I mean, you mentioned we did an information kit, we did a flopper analysis. Mm. We had a challenge whereby we felt that this was not a listing that we would buy at this particular price. We rectified it, virtual staged it, double volume ceiling. We saw the USP. Any other things that we did before it turned live? Yeah, so first I saw that hey, Garden Residences is selling 2.15. Yeah. For a four bedroom. I remember we were doing a listing presentation. We we're like, yeah. oh no, two point two is a good price, really. Yeah. Yeah. Four bedroom for garden residences, and three bedrooms in Affinity at that time was around two point one, two point one two million. Yeah. So we had to really play by the USP of this home, which was the view. Yeah. And understanding why this view was premium compared to the other listings. That's right. That's one. So the moment the buyers come in, we share with them this is a premium stack. That's right. And why? And aside from it being a premium stack, this is the only unit that has a double volume ceiling in the entire development. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, that's on sale. Yes. And for them to visualize, eh, how can you actually renovate the space? Yes. Because a lot of them coming, they were actually young families. Yep. Or couples. Yep. And they want they were looking for a normal three bedroom. Yeah. They were not looking for a premium stack three bedroom. They, were, they need they something were, affordable, yeah. right? Yeah. They were yeah. not looking for a three bedroom with a double volume ceiling. Yeah. So the challenge that we were facing was also the, hey, I don't really need this double volume ceiling. Mm. For this price, if I can get a bigger space for a double and without this double volume ceiling, then yeah. I'd rather go for a bigger space. Fair. It's a fair point. Yeah. yeah. So they were, this was uh, one of the challenges that we, we got, which yeah. we already knew and expected. Yes. So that's why we came up with 
all of this pricing analysis, floor plan comparison. Yes. That we included in the information kit that we usually have yes. uh, during the viewings. That's right. So the objections was also handled well because we know, and we also kind of know who our target audience were. Yeah. Target audiences, they are not just going for affordable homes, but something that is of premium and something that is a bit more yeah. luxurious in their affinity or gardens residences on cliff and yes. willing to pay a premium for their pocket view as well, right? Mm. And I think uh, one uh, interesting thing, which is a pro tip for all of us, is this. A lot of realtors, before you take on the listing, right, you will tend to reject yourself in the pricing, right? And it's indeed true. Sometimes owners are very unrealistic in the pricing. And as I've mentioned in my previous video if I want to sell my home now I'm going to sell 500k above the market valuation <laughs> right because we're all owners you should deserve to have the highest right but I think that instead of just always adjusting prices the broker as well as the seller has to come together like a partner to think if I want to sell and challenge the top price is there anything else I can do to make it a more convicted and a more airtight case so that buyers are more than happy to pay and that's what is strong about our team here right so once the listing is live how did the viewings go how many inquiries did we have and one and a half months, you know, what are some of the objections that you faced? Yeah, so the moment the listing got, uh, we actually uploaded the listing, we actually got a lot of healthy inquiries on this, yeah. at least about two to three yeah. a week. Um, but we actually didn't do any videos on this. Yes. Uh, because it was empty and yeah. we told the owners, we wanted to help the owners save some cost. Yes. Um, with AI, we were able to do this. Yes. With the virtual staging. Yeah. So the moment it got live, we actually posted the virtual staging online. We also did the 3D rendering. So we had about three to four inquiries a week, um, at least two viewings per week. Yes. And I think within the first uh, three weeks, we actually already got an offer yeah. of about 2.15. Yes, which is lower. La, which is lower. Than what la. the owner expected. Yeah, which is lower than the, the owner's expectation. Yes. Because previously, she rejected 2.2 million. 100%. Yeah, so anything below 2.2, no point. Yeah, no point. No point. No point. Yeah, so we just reject. actually rejected this on um, behalf of the owners. Yes. Because first, um, we were getting a lot of inquiries. Mm. It would be a different story if that was the only viewing that we had. Yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah. But the fact that we're already getting healthy inquiries, healthy viewings, yeah. that means that there's demand and people are looking at your listings. Yes. So that's why we, I decided that I'm going to reject this listing. Let's wait for a better offer. Reject this price and then hold firm uh, yes, for reject future this price, higher correct. price. Yeah. Reject this price. We'll hold firm on the pricing that the owner is looking at. Yeah. And then we actually got this couple who viewed and they really liked the unit. Yeah. But they haven't sold their place yet. Yes. But, from the viewing, I knew that they were really interested and they were really keen. Yes. Yeah, because they were the type of uh, that sometimes you know when during viewings and you would know. yeah, you would know yeah. what kind of buyers are interested in the yes. house and what kind of are not. Yes. Yes. That's sometimes when the buyers walk in and out within one minute, you, you know, know that they're not they're yeah. not gonna consider your yeah. unit at all. Yeah. But this buyer, they were looking at the, the double volume ceiling and they were like, I've never imagined myself viewing a double volume ceiling. Yeah. But I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And but then the the challenge was that they haven't sold their unit yet. Yes. And I had to follow up with the co broke very, very closely yes. to check whether or not they're still interested. Initially, I thought they were not keen anymore because yeah. like after one week, usually after after they after they view yeah. and they're really keen, they will make an offer immediately. Yeah, one week is quite long. Already, yeah, so actually. one week was really long. Yeah. And then I found out that they haven't sold their property. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I had to really work with the co broke very closely. Yeah. They priced their EC very, very competitively, managed to sell it within one week. Yeah. And then about two or three weeks later, they came back with an offer. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I think this is something that a lot of real estate agents, they miss out. They always treat Cobra agents like their rivals, mm. you know? And fun fact, in JNA Real Estate, right, 50% of our homes are sold with Cobra agents. Yep. And we love Cobra agents because we know that if we have the Cobra agent on our team and we represent the sell side, the buyers will definitely be more excited to pay more lah, so our sellers can make more money as well, yes. right? So if you don't know, JNA Real Estate is very pro Cobra King. So please come and Cobra with us. We Cobra with very fair commission as well. Uh, sometimes even higher than market uh, co commission just so that we can get the highest price for our sellers, right? Yes. So um, once the listing is sold, the negotiation process, I remember we did it in Bar, uh, in, where is it? Surabaya. Surabaya. Yeah. And we did it over a phone. Uh, I mean, it was super heartless. We shouldn't have done that, but I mean, we were in Surabaya and the buyer needed an answer. We knew this was the best offer and our sellers were like, wow, we knew you guys could do it and we did it, right? How do you feel? I mean, after selling this listing? I think, I mean, first the offer didn't come in at uh, 2.25. Yes. It first came in at about 2.22. Yes which wasn't much from the previous 100%. offer that came yeah, in. And so, we're not satisfied yeah. with it. So we were not satisfied. I was like, I'm going to push. Let's <laughs> yeah. push this. Yes. Before we actually went to the owner. So 
for our side, we always try to push for the best offer. Yes. And we always go to the owner with the best offer. And that is yeah. the sensitivity of the broker. And that's the reason why I always say this. You can pay peanuts, but you'll get mm. monkeys. But this kind of brokers, we are trained to know exactly when the buyer can pay a bit more. Yes. We can smell the buying instinct from a distance, from a mile, from a mile away. Because the reason behind that is because that we have seen this many times. Within one or two minutes, we get 30000 to even $100,000 more for our sellers, right? And this is the follow-up plus understanding the buyer's needs and knowing when they're emotional and getting them to purchase it, right? Yes. And this is for the good of our sellers who are representing as well. Okay, so is there like a um, pro tip or a closing thought that you have when it comes to like maybe selling homes? I mean, Geraldine has been selling homes constantly at top price. Um, and that's also the reason why I love to give her the hard listings to sell. Uh, and also like listings that are stuck in the market for one and a half years. <laughs> sometimes I wonder if this is luck or is it the genius systems? Because sometimes all these listings that are stuck for one year, yeah. I don't know why you managed to sell it within like I tell two months, the reason. three It's months. actually not luck because listings that has been stuck in the market for one and a half years, people know that it's for sale already. Yeah. But it's how we represent the listing. Correct. That people feel that. It's like when you go to Louis Vuitton, right? You're not going to, can you imagine if the if the bags are just placed uh, in a trash bag right beside yeah. the counter? You're not going yes. to buy it. But if it's placed in just one designated cabinet, you're going to be like, I'm going to pay $5,000 for this, you know? Yeah. So that is the difference in marketing and representation. So is there one pro tip or like a closing thought that you have? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of owners think that, hey, um, if I market my listing yeah. on Property Guru, I don't care about my I don't care about how it's being marketed. A lot of owners tell just us get I, don't care, really. I don't care how, how I, I don't care home. how it's marketed, yeah. just keep deliver me the results. But it's important to know the process yes. and the systems of how your property is being marketed. That's right. And I think sometimes it's good to um micromanage the agent oh, a little bit. Yeah. Yes, because sometimes agent. yes, yes. Because if you don't you don't know what's happening to your unit, yes. you don't know how it's being marketed. And in this case, um, I think what we did really well yes. was that first we understood that the owners were not they wanted to try to save cost first. Yeah. That's why we didn't bring in um, actual staging. Yes, which costs like yeah. 1000 to 2000 a month. It can cost, I mean, for like a full three-bedroom staging, yeah. it can cost at least about 2K a 2K month. Plus, yeah. yeah, 2K a month. And if let's say we actually did the the staging immediately, we have lost they would money. have they would have been paying like maybe two to four K yeah. for the staging. Yeah. But in this case, we actually try to save them some uh, money first yes. through virtual staging. Yes. And also the rendering was also which looks really yeah. good. Yeah, the rent because the three rendering we actually have a, a team a team that yeah. we actually work with yeah. for for the three rendering and it really helped them save some cost for both rendering plus virtual staging. That's right. Yes, right. yes. Even the 3D rendering, right? We also micromanage to make sure that it looks good. Yes. <laughs> you know, and this is the amount of effort that a good broker will put behind the scenes, right? Mm. So what I'm hearing from you is that it's always good for owners to micromanage their realtors, right? May not be something that realtors want to hear, but yes, yes. you should micromanage your realtors. And number two, also for realtors to micromanage their corporate agent. Because a lot of realtors, if you're watching this, you may be thinking, I don't know why my corporate agent is not giving an offer, but you must remember that they are not agents, they're humans. And humans are emotional. Mm -hmm. And when they're emotional, sometimes they can go cold. Yeah. So you have to follow up the corporate agent and make them feel like you are on the team because ultimately an agent, a corporate agent just wants to make money. Yes. So you just make them feel that you are on the same team. I think that's the best that we can advise you as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Locked It. We hope that if you are, let's say, an owner who's looking to sell a home or like maybe you're selling a TOP unit for a long time and you cannot and a broker who's just so lost. You know, just a couple of days ago, I received a text from a broker telling me, I'm so lost. I have six listings and they're priced right, but I just don't know why I can't get any offer and I haven't got any cash flow for a month, right? I hope that this can help you, right? And remember this, Jenny Real Estate is always one call, one text or one email away. Our QR code is going to be over here so you can contact us if you have any listings they want to sell. And you know what? The truth of the matter here is I'm looking to sell my own home very soon. I follow the JNA process. I stage my own home. I do our home home tours. And if I have someone to pick to sell my home, that will be this lady that's right beside me, okay? And I told her I'm going to pay her like $1,999. She says she's not going to work for me. But Bye. anyways, <laughs> yeah, of course, right? Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Jervis. My name is Geraldine. And thank you so much for watching this episode of the Locked It series. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.